Hello everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to uh, another Ski Sunday. This is number 12 in the series. Been going from the start of the year. I think pretty much the first week of January actually. So I'm um, very happy to have got this far um, as we come to the end of March into April. Um, greetings from London. I'm um, doing this from uh, my uh, house in Stoke Newington in London and um, greetings to everyone uh, wherever you are wherever you may be around the world um, great to have you here um, and yeah the clocks went forward today so it uh, it, it, it kind of uh, freaked me out a bit actually because uh, I've just tried trying to sort of fit in all the things I normally fit in on a Sunday um, and having one less hour to do it all so uh, hey Richard great to have you along um, so yeah, a um, bit of a rush one this, but you know, um, it's going to be a good one, I think. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of background, hey Pixel Chaos, great to have you along as well. Happy Sunday. Um, so this is a track that I'm, I've been aware of, um, I've loved um, for a while, and, um, and then I was listening to Lauren Laverne, she's a DJ on Six Music in the UK, so uh, it's a great station. BBC Six Music Station. You can pretty pick it up actually around the world, I imagine, but I thoroughly recommend it. Anyway, she plays a real eclectic mix of music um, and she does play a lot of um, dance music, electronic music. Um, and hey, hi there. Um, I'm trying to say that. I'm trying to say, uh, pronounce, is it Etexquel? Maybe you can uh, you can tell me how to phonetically say that. Um, great to have you along. Anyway, anyway, she pl she played this track, and um, I was just sort of there getting doing my morning routine, getting everyone ready, and um, and it came on, and it was like, oh my god, it's such a such a euphoric, fantastic track, um, and I want to look into it. Really, I thought it might be quite a good topic for today's breakdown. Um, not that I've kind of I'm always going to be doing breakdowns, but I just thought, well, this is uh, this is a good one. So um, I'm gonna. I'll put a link in the in the chat if you want to buy it. I would thoroughly recommend supporting all the artists that um, that uh, I do breakdowns of if you can. Um, and also uh, here's the video as well, um, which is a fantastic video. It really is. I'll put I'll put that in the chat. There we go. Um, so yeah. Um, so I think we should I think we should get on with it. I just want to. Um, just mention a couple of things. Um, this week, uh, an album came out that I played on. Um, in fact, let me find it now. Uh, here we go. It's uh, by Strata. Um, it's a project uh, of Bluey from Incognito um, and Giles Peterson. Um, and I actually played on this last year and it's finally came out. It came out this week. Um, and I'm going to be definitely doing a breakdown of one of these tracks. Uh, the ones, one of them, one that I played on probably after the rain. Um, so I'll just put the link in that. Please check that. It's kind of Brit funk, um, but you know, new wave Brit funk. It's got, you know, it's got quite a rough sound to it in a, in a good way, you know, and um, I played lots of synths on it. So definitely be looking at that anyway. Check that out if you can, came out this week. Um, and also just wanted to give a shout out to the guys from Two Banks of Four. Um, I'm wearing a very old t-shirt that's been washed so many times it's uh, become quite small. Um, hey Richard, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really, really great album um, and definitely gonna be doing uh, a breakdown. Look at all this, the, I've got the project basically when I recorded all the synths on one, on one of the tracks, so. Cool. All right. Well, look, let's let's get get cracking with this. Um, uh, what I've got here, there's two there's two mixes of this. There's a full length and a radio edit. So what I'll do is I'll just I'll just put both in for the moment, just so that we can uh, reference both of them. But I'll probably go off the the full ed, the full sort of longer length edit, um, just because it's a bit more spaced out and things are a bit more kind of isolated. So, uh, okay, so I've dragged it in. Um, oh, it's actually found the tempo. I wonder if it's actually done that automatically. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Let's just... Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't have to do much work there. Looks like it's in time. Um, 123 BPM, cool. 
Let's just go a little bit further down the track. Uh, Yep, that's in time, which is great. Um, now, I don't know if you might have seen uh, a deconstruction that I did uh, a while ago. Um, I'm just gonna bring it up here. Uh, oh, where is it? Is it not on here? Surely it must be here. Okay, let's uh, let's look it up on here then. There we go. So Todd Terrier, Inspector Norse. So um, this is this actually, I think, I'm not sure if they know each other, but this track came out um, on uh, the same label, Small Town Super Sound, um, both Norwegian, I understand. Um, and there's definitely some similarities uh, in the sound uh, of, of, you know, this kind of the, mu the, the music they're both making. It's kind of, I don't know if they've got similar kind of synth setups or whatever, but um, definitely some similarities. So I think that's another kind of reason that it really sort of sparked my interest. Um, anyway, well, look, I mean, let's just have a, so we're not going to play through the whole tune, but um, let's just kind of go through it now and just pick out the main sections. Great thing is it's got it in time for me, which is really cool. Um, I'm just going to check the warping. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think it's probably good enough to, Let's just check if it's on. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly, slightly kind of ahead. Maybe, maybe I could just fix that. Let's just do that now. Um, but I'm not going to be using any of these sounds. I'm going to just try to kind of create my own versions of these sounds. So let's just get rid of that and then just drag that over there. There we go. Cool. So. I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll go through this and, and kind of mark out some sections as I normally do. Okay, so we've got to kind of the, just the beat as it, as, it, uh, as it starts there, then the uh, kind of closed hat comes in. Nice synth chord. Then some other drum machine comes in there. That sounds like it's a CR78 or something. Okay, so we've already got three three sections. Okay, nothing new in there. Apart from some maybe interesting kind of chord stuff. Okay. So new kind of synth riff, I would say. Some nice kind of extra sounds coming in there, which have got some sort of delays on them, like ping pong delays. Okay. bit more sort of texture coming in. There's a nice kind of riff. Okay, here we go. Bass line. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to keep listening through. Okay. Then we've got this arpeggio type riff coming in. I think these are the key elements that I'm going to focus on when you know whenever a new key element comes in that's what I'll look to recreate. Okay let's quickly move forward. Oh. Okay 
Then we've got this nice melody. I just love the kind of syncopation of all these parts. This is just where it gets kind of euphoric. Oh man, this is amazing. It's an interesting sort of portamento type, type, type stuff going on. Okay, then it comes down. Ah, then we got, get quite a um, Inspector Norse-ish type fast arpeggio coming in. So that'd be interesting to look at. I think I might even have the same arpeggio rack that I can pull up for that. Okay. All right, so whew, there's quite a lot going on there, isn't there? Um, I think what I'll do is, I mean, it's just, just interestingly, just have a quick listen to the radio edit um, to see what happens, see what the sort of difference is there. Okay, so it starts off with a different type of riff that I didn't hear in the, in the longer version. There's that clap. It's obviously all kind of compressed. It's all coming in much quicker. Great. Well, look, let's let's concentrate um, on the longer version um, and just look at some of these sections. So, I think what I'll do is um, do the consolidate consolidate time to new scene method. Um, just because then that's going to crop it for me, um, put it into the session view, um, and also loop it up for me, which is which is very handy. So I've got a key command set up for this, which is consolidate time to new scene. So I'm just going to do that now. Shift Command N, and if we just play that now, let's just mute the uh, radio version, which is probably I didn't fix that fix that warping so but that's good enough for the moment hopefully the loop will be good perfect nice uh, okay so let's just keep doing that for all these all these different sections um, shift on n I've been a bit lazy today I normally I normally I color these color these clips uh, but I suppose it's that's more useful when when there's I'm trying to sort of analyze the structure of a tune in terms of verse, pre-chorus, chorus, you know, middle eight or bridge, that that kind of thing. Um, for this, it's 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 like building and building and building, you know, layering. Um, so it's maybe sort of less important. If uh, if you're new to this um, this stream, um, welcome along. Um, my name's Ski Oakenfall, and uh, yeah, this is something I'm doing every Sunday. I normally do something midweek as well, but um, I've been really trying to concentrate on getting my album finished. I'm I would say I'm about 80% of the way. I've just got to. Uh, I've just been doing sort of recalls really of lots of demos from about the last 10 years, and just trying to finish them off, and then not. Uh, not moving, not moving on to the next one until I finish that one. So, uh, yeah, I've got about two more tracks to, to finish, um, and then obviously make some sort of like final tweaks. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've just been kind of really trying to concentrate on that, which is why I haven't done anything during the week. Um, okay, cool. So let's come back to this now. Uh, let's just, I'll just delete these because we don't need those in there, um, and then we can now we can trigger them from here now from push. It's nice we can do a little kind of rearrangement on the fly. We can even 
go back to. I love it. It still, it still never ceases to amaze me how amazing Ableton Live is uh, and pretty push as well, you know, the way it all, all works together. Cool. Okay, so let's start off with the drums, um, which is up here. All right, so what we've got, we've basically got a kick and a snare and a clap. So let's just, uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these over here so they're at the start um, and then let's just close that down. Um, in fact, we don't even need the radio edit, so let's just get rid of that. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's look for some drums. I've got a feeling, just from experience, that this might be uh, a DMX kit. Um, used on Blue Monday. So let's just let's just go with that for the moment and see and see what uh, it's going to sound like. Um, not that. <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, go to note accent. Cool. Let's just play it again. So very very simple. Let's just bring the level down um, and we can get into actually sort of some of the sounds here um, it's going to increase the top end a bit and there's a glue function here okay so let's just put that in anyway Probably I didn't have record quantize on, no. Let's quantize that. Okay, so let's just uh, keep that there um, and then just look at the clap. Now the clap, let's just have another listen to it. It could be a number of things. It could be him just putting lots of claps together, um, or it could be um, a clap trap or something like that, which is uh, a kind of old. In fact, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute. But this, I'm going to I'm going to try that out now. Um, the clap trap. Uh, let's go to my user library um, because this is something that was actually given away. Uh, it's called clap box. There we go. Let's just drag that over. Um, there we go. In fact, let me just show you. I just did um, bring that up. There we go. It's by Pure Magnetic, and it's free. Um, and it's it's kind of a version of this, which is made by Simmons, um, the Claptrap. So I'll give you a quick demo of it in a minute. But I'll just put the link in the chat. There we go. Uh, so what is what's good about this? Um, and I'm going to see if I can actually increase the size of this, there we go, hopefully that works, is that we can, we can adjust things like tone, so give it more bottom end, um, the pitch, uh, the space, so that's basically reverb, maybe take that off for the moment, there's a noise pitch as well, and there's, it can, you, there's a balance between the clap sound and then just like a a uh, kind of white noise so you can adjust the pitch of the noise as well um, velocity sensitivity there's the decay and then so we can kind of make it you can make it quite tight as well um, cool let's just do that okay so so let's just put the part in first um, before we actually uh, look at the sound. I think it needs to be a little bit tighter with that decay. In fact, what might be nice is to actually put this into a drum rack. Um, there you go, 
screw it to a drum rack. And then we can maybe add some other uh, other clap sounds as well to sort of beef it up. All right, so let's put that in. Okay, so let's just maybe work on these sounds a bit. Um, I'm just going to compare the snare now. It sounds to me like it's maybe uh, a little bit kind of lower in pitch. Yeah, it's more like it. And also the kick sounds like it's maybe a bit higher in pitch. Uh, okay, and also I can hear some reverb. So let's just put some reverb. Um, there is some kind of built into, into this anyway. If I just... Uh, See if there's any sends there. No, so there's nothing. I, I haven't actually put any with these macros at the moment. Oh yeah, nice to add some drive actually. Um, but yeah, let's put a nice reverb on. Um, let's put the EMT 140. Okay, let's drag that in. There we go. Maybe take uh, the time down. And also maybe take off some of the bottom end as well. Maybe a little bit too long, but... Okay, uh, let's now um, look at um, these claps, and maybe we can just uh, just maybe add some claps to these. Um, um, that, let's just let's just see. Yeah, <laughs> that's not going to that's not going to help, is it? Um, okay, let's just try here for some claps. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's just drag in a few more. It's quite nice as well. And then maybe the old, an, an eight oh eight. Yeah, true, Richie. Yeah, it does sound a bit like beat it. Okay, so there we go. We've got some more claps there, and I think I'm going to do a similar thing here with the uh, with the reverb uh, on this drum rack, uh, and just put uh, a reverb on the return. So maybe maybe let's be let's be friendly with uh, with our good old Ableton reverb. There we go. We don't want to disregard the Ableton reverb, do we? Okay. Okay, so let's, um, also what we could do actually, just to kind of widen it out, we could just pan these. They sound, they sound a little bit more kind of spread out. So what I could do just in that case is 
just with the clap box, um, uh, maybe increase that. Okay, cool. I don't want to spend too much more time on that. I think that's good enough for the moment. What I will do um, is group these um, and put the old classic uh, drum bus. There we go. Okay, let's take the damping off. And maybe we can kind of add a bit of a boom. That's at 50, 50k at the moment. So 50 hertz. With, without, with. Just take the out, down, output down a little bit. Cool. And something that I do do as well uh, is just to sort of add a bit of sheen um, to drums is I use the uh, this plugin here, which is actually free, um, Lufticus. And you can get some really nice kind of air at the top as well. So that's with, that's without. Cool, okay. Um, so let's just go to the next bit now, the next section. I think this is just where the hi-hats come in. Yeah. So maybe we can just um, make use of the DMX hats. Um, we could we could look for some different sounds as well. It's just playing on the offbeat. So it's quite a thin sound. Uh, let's just play. Let's just take those hats down a bit. I'm just gonna mark this drums. Oops. There we go. And also just mark that claps just so I can remind myself. Um, okay, so what uh, sound have we got here? Okay, so how can we improve that? Um, I would say the first thing to do uh, will be to tune up a bit. Next thing to do would be to filter off uh, some of that low end. Um, also maybe make it a bit tighter, maybe even a little bit more. Okay. And also take a level down. And add some reverb. Cool, let's add in. Okay, so we've got two two scenes now. Right, let's listen to the next section. Okay, so like I said before, I think that is uh, a CR78. Um, I've actually got a an the precursor to that, which is a, a Roland TR66. So it's very similar sort of sounds. So I'm quite familiar with the sounds. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll, we'll try that out. I'll keep it all in the drum rack for the moment. Um, so let's just type in 78, CR78. Okay, let's drag it over. Um, So let's just play the uh, original. Definitely sounds like those toms. And then maybe using that. It could be something I can just play just using the repeat function. Okay, let's just record that in as it is. OK, 
Okay, and then let's let's try the repeat. I'm going to take the accent off. Normally, I I put the accent on just to make sure that everything I'm putting is in is is at 127 velocity. But um, for this, if I put the repeat on and then to go to sixteenths. I can kind of as I'm pressing pressing down, you can sort of hear the accents. Let's just put the metronome on. Okay, it's quite nice. I should say at this this stage that uh, I have no um, no idea at all what sounds Lindstrom used. Or I haven't got no insight. I haven't done any. I mean, I had a very brief look at some interviews he's done, but I didn't even really have time to read them. So um, if you are using, are using, if you are watching. Um, now or any time just let please i'd love to know i'd love to have some insight into the instruments that you use on this okay nice so let's just use uh push to nice okay so we've got three scenes Um, what might be quite nice on this actually is to maybe sort of add some convolution reverb uh, on it. Maybe some spring reverb. Uh, always a big fan of spring reverb. Um, just for that extra kind of vintage sound. Okay. Okay, let's look for springs. nice quite subtle maybe we can just bring the size down a bit just had a thought actually I might just bring the transients up on this drum bus as well great nice okay so let's just duplicate all those parts down now and we can look at the next section which is this cool all right so let's create a new MIDI track um, and um, I did um, not really cheating, but I did do a little bit of just sort of uh, preparation with some sounds here, just purely as starting points. I didn't really spend a lot of time tweaking them, um, but yeah, for this one, let's let's have a look to see um, what we could possibly use. I'm going to go as you may you may have seen some of my previous streams. I'm a big fan of the of the Tal uh, Uno LX. Um, I bought it a long time ago. It's the it's basically a recreation of the Roland Juno 60. And the reason I love it so much is that I'm very familiar with the kind of Roland synth architecture. My first synth was a Roland SH-101. So it's very, I'm very sort of familiar with, with the setup. Um, but it's also really kind of CPU light, um, which is brilliant. You know, you can run quite a few of them and it doesn't really have a big impact. Um, so, okay, so for this one, um, let's have a look. I've got a little folder here. Um, and if you own this, I can, I can, I'm happy to make these these sounds available as well. Um, so yeah, I've called this one synth one. So, so what I've got here um, is I've got the uh, square wave or the, the the pulse wave together with the sub as well. So that's kind of playing, I think, an octave underneath. Um, I'm not using the saw wave, although I could do, I suppose. 
Um, I've got both choruses on. Um, and yeah, a bit of resonance. Um, the It's a very sort of sharp attack with some nice release. And I've got a polyphony of four. So, so I can only play basically four notes. Um, and it's just so that there's a bit of kind of I didn't want too much kind of crossover of sounds. I wanted them to be quite distinct, the voices, I mean. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the key signature. I'm gonna do bring up my VMPK here. Um, come on, there we go. Have a little bit of water. Um, so we haven't even talked about what key signature in. You know what as well I might do, just very quickly, uh, just the thought, is that there may be uh, a bit of kind of swing on this track. Um, I'm not sure yet, um, but what I could do is if I just click on um, one clip and then select them all, and then just bring up the grooves here, um, let's just Let's just stick on this one. There we go, which is the highest you can go now on the swing 16th 73. So that's obviously too much. But then we've got the global quantize here. So that's with nothing. I'm just adding a little bit in. And it maybe gives it just a nice bit of sort of, just a little bit of bounce. Which, which might which might be good because we can just then just add that into all the other parts that we're going to uh, work on. So there we go. Um, all right, so let's just bring back my keyboard. So you should be able to see that there. Let's just play it. Uh, let's, just play, let's just mute the drums for the moment. Put this back in, oops. Okay, so it's going from B flat to G. Okay, so I would say that it's in B flat major. So two flats, B flat and E flat. And then it's going down to the relative minor, which is G minor, again, two flats. This is the riff, I think. Um, let's play along uh, and then we can listen to it with the beat that I put in. Uh, let's go back here. Ah, that's that's maybe that's maybe slightly different there. Um, let's just. Just go to that last bit uh, so we can check that. Da 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 da. Okay. All right. So let's just adjust that then. In that case, da da da. goes up to the F. All right, um, clear on that. Okay, so let's just put that loop back in. And let's just fold this. And is it gonna give us that option? Let's just put a little monitor on. Cool, let's take that out now.
There we go. Um, also, at this point, I think it might be quite nice to have a reverb on the uh, on a return. Um, so let's just put something nice on. When I say put something nice on, I just mean put on the EMT EMT one hundred and forty again. This this was the first plugin I ever got, first UAD plugin I got, and uh, I certainly didn't regret it. Um, okay, so let's just solo it. All right, and then let's not forget now to put on that groove. Okay, nice. Let's. What's the uh, what's the next section? Okay. Dig it, dig it. It's this. That's a really nice kind of picky sound. Okay, so let's find another sound. Um, I think. Uh, we can use another towel sound for that. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to save this just in case we get a crash. Hopefully we won't. Uh, okay, so let's bring the towel back. Actually, there's another sound that I think we can use for this, sorry. Uh, and that is something, I think that's something probably from one of my collections. Um, here we go, let's try this. This is actually an analogue sound. Okay, that's nice. Um, let's just listen to it. So it's going to bring the keyboard back. Very simple. It may well vary. But let's put that in anyway. Oops. In fact, we only need half a bar of it. Hey, yes, music on. Let's put the swing on it. There's a lot of lovely kind of synth swirly stuff going on there, isn't there? Um, okay, let's just take out the original and play this now. Okay, uh, let's just take this down. Right, so I think that could really benefit from some echo. Um, Okay, let's take the dry wet right down. Ping pong. Maybe filter, filter off some of that bottom end. Some reverb on. I just put that on something by mistake. What did I put that on? I thought I put that on there. Ah, no. Where did I put it? Oh, ah, that's there. That's weird. Why is that feeding into... That is bizarre.
<laughs> that's so weird. That's like it's kind of putting it's put that. Ah, I've definitely put it somewhere else. That's because I put it on the master. Classic. <laughs> there we go. Freak over, out, over. Okay, so out of interest, is that... Okay. Okay, so there's definitely some um, work that's being done on this, uh, on the filter cutoff. So where is that? That's there, isn't it? Um, cool. Okay, so um, let's just group that. Um, okay, and then let's just do some mapping. Map that to macro one. There we go. Let's just play it. Take map map off. Okay, that's nice, um, and I'm quite happy with that just sort of like bubbling around in the background. Again, you know, that we could... We could actually do the same thing for that, and that might be quite nice actually. So let's just group that um, and then map that. What's great actually about um, the new feature in Live 11 is you can actually reduce the amount of macros that you can see so if we only want one macro for that and then again we only want one macro for this filter cutoff uh, we can just see the one okay so let's just uh, name that so pick and maybe I'll call that a bubble bubbler there we go and then this is the synth riff one synth riff one there we go. So. All right, um, I think the next part to come in, if my memory serves me correctly, is the bass. Let's have a listen. Okay, so what's what's in there? So we haven't got that main synth riff, but we've got, in fact, have we got the claps here? We have. Okay, so the claps come out there and we just have the... The DMX, that CR78. We haven't got that main synth riff, we've got the bubbler. I'm actually just going to turn the snare down a bit. And I also think I might have missed a very important aspect here, which is the fact that the kick drum should probably be on, uh, it should be a four to the floor. How could I even forget that? Or not see that. Okay, but maybe it isn't isn't there. But then when it when everything comes in, it probably is. So let's just let's just replace those. Any self-respecting dance floor track has got four on the floor. Now that now that makes me want to turn the snare up a little bit. Right, baseline then. Let's just do a little save. OK, 
Okay. Right, so um, I for the bass line, I, it really sounds to me like it's an ARP, either an ARP 2600. Um, hey, Gaz. Um, yes, this is 3 o'clock on uh, 3 o'clock every Sunday. Uh, Ski Sunday, it's called. <coughs> um, I'm sorry if there might be a bit of confusion today, but we... The clocks went forward in the UK, and I don't know if they do ever any, anywhere else around the world. Probably not. Um, it's uh, it's slightly annoying time. So yeah, if you've kind of come to this late, thinking that it was going to be uh, three o'clock um, your time, whatever the equivalent time is, then sorry. But yeah, it's every week. So yeah, and also I try to do ones during the week as well um, when I get a chance. Just I didn't I didn't this week unfortunately. Um, cool. All right. So let's have a look at uh, the baseline. So as I was saying, I think it's an ARP. I've actually got a Korg ARP Odyssey, which I normally have sort of set up here. Um, although, although at the moment I've got my deck set up and I was going to set it up and then I thought, I've actually also got the Korg plugin, ARP Odyssey plugin. So I think that's um, as much as I try to use um, analog wherever I can, whenever I've got it, I think probably for the purposes of this, this will be fine. Uh, so going to drag this over. I mean, it's it's a it's an amazing recreation, I have to say. It's brilliant. Um, I did have a, an actual art back in the day, which I sold very sadly. Um, so yeah, I've got a I've got a starting point here, um, which I'll load up now. And I'll just just talk a little bit through the sound here. Um, so let's just see if I can uh, make it a bit bigger. I'm just sort of hoping that works actually for... Oops. All right, so what have we got here? Um, we've got two oscillators. Um, they are both saw waves. So, so if I just take this one down, that's the first one. And then this one is playing an octave up. So I've got sync off actually, so that um, I could freely change the, the frequency of that. But I think I sort of started from, with this I started with a with a, a, a bass preset already and then I just sort of started kind of adapting it. Um, the, the one that I started with actually had unison on, um, but that's on, it, I, I changed it to mono anyway, so I just wanted to kind of make it as solid as possible, um, not to sort of have any kind of phasing or or not kind of want the the bottom end to drop out in, in any way at all. Um, now, the things that are important to this sound are the release. So this is something that I'll probably map actually to a macro because he definitely changes and he uses it to kind of really make the sound the sections more dense at certain points, but I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. So that's important. There's obviously the frequency cutoff that is changing. There are actually three VCF types here, um, according to the model of the ARP Odyssey that was made. Um, I've just got it on version one. Um, and then I think crucially is this portamento. So this is like a glissando effect. It, it kind of makes the sound rather than rather than when you when you hit a note, it going straight to the next one. It kind of slides up. So um, if I make it really really extreme, it's a bit too much. So so we're going to leave it there for the moment. Uh, cool. All right. So let's just actually kind of look at the part. Um, I'm going to take that off at the moment. Let's bring my keyboard back. Um, so yeah, what's going on here? Uh, let's just mute all my sounds for the moment. And then play the original. I'm going to quickly go back into the, into the sound because he's definitely got the uh, release uh, shorter. OK, 
Okay, so let's just go back again. So let's just play again. Um, I'm going to listen to this bit here. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, when he go, when he, when he plays it, so it's quite staccato these bits, and then then it gets kind of legato just for those sort of passing notes. Um, so let's put it in. it in. I made a mistake there. There we go. Nice. Could listen to that for ages. Um, I'm just going to bring down the little bubbly sound there. All right, and uh, before I was just saying how it'd be quite nice to to map some of these um, parameters to macro. So let's just do that now. I think we just need to map the release um, and the frequency. So if I just click on configure um, and then just literally just kind of hit that release there and then also the cutoff frequency, VCF frequency. There we go. So so I can control them from there. But let's um, let's map these. So let's just group them and put on the macros. Click on map and then let's just do that to macro one and then that to macro two. And then we can turn map off. There we go. And it's quite convenient because they, they then show up on push here. Um, and hey, we can even color them. Not sure what appropriate colors are for EG1 release and VCF frequency, but that'll do for me. Um, so. Um, I think I might even just rename these as well. So just do that just as release and then uh, cut off. And then it's just easier for me to see here. All right, um, I think you could do with a bit more bottom end. Um, probably overall this track needs a bit more bottom end, um, but let's just name this base. And let's just do save as, there we go. And let's just go really simple with this. Let's just do, use the uh, EQ8. So just kind of boosting here around 80 Hertz. Um, and also maybe a bit of compression could be quite good as well. Let's just keep it really simple with the Ableton compressor. Mm. 
Okay. So let's just go from the section before. I think we can take down this synth riff a bit, it's a bit loud. Okay, let's uh, let's give it the groove. Why not? All right, let's move on. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you're all well out there. Um, we're getting there. We're getting to the end of this uh, this, this breakdown. Um, cool. So let's listen to the next section. Okay, so we got this lovely art melody. So what are the other elements that are going on here? We've got the beats. Bass. We've got the bubbling sound. Hey Moda, sorry, yeah, no, no worries. I understand that there was the clocks went forward in the UK, so it's messed up people's timings a little bit. But yep, it'll be it will stay on Twitch, um, and I'll archive it on my YouTube channel as well, so you can watch it back there. Um, it's a bit annoying actually. Sometimes, well, the the kind of song detection or audio right digital rights management um, uh, detection on Twitch is different to how it works on YouTube. Um, so sometimes on Twitch, it actually kind of mutes some of the audio, which is annoying. Um, so for the one I did last week, it did that just for the section where I've kind of played through the track at the start and the air song, all I need. Um, but then on YouTube, it didn't. So it's fine. But sometimes whatever happens, I always kind of download these streams afterwards. And if necessary, I'll just edit that bit out just so that it doesn't kind of ruin the, the, the viewing experience if necessary. So... Um, Cool. All right. So I'm going to we're going to look at this uh, arpeggio. Uh, so let's. Uh, what did I use for this? I think yeah. This is another Tal Uno LX. Ah, oh, Moda. Thanks for the subscription. Really appreciate that. Brilliant. That's very kind of you. Um, really, really appreciate it. Thanks. Cool. So let's go. Let's go for the Tal again. And drag it over, and yeah, I did put put together a basic a basic patch for this, and uh, what did I call it? Um, I think I called it the main ARP. There we go. So this is literally just a saw wave on its own. Um, very very simple just with um, chorus one on it. So that kind of widens it out, which is quite nice. And I think that this can go to the reverb that I've got on the return. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to uh, figure out the actual part. Let me bring up my keyboard. Now I think what the sort of genius of this part is, is that it's not every kind of bar or every half a bar, it changes patterns slightly. Um, so in fact, I'm going to slow it down a bit. The advantage of Ableton Live, you can slow it down a bit. go.
There we go. Uh, let's just put that bit in first. <laughs> Whoa. I need to lower the volume of that click. That's pretty horrific. So. Okay, let's record that in. Just put that last bit in, overdub that. Ah, undo. Need to put those in. Okay, so let's just um, double that loop because I think it changes. Uh, so let's just delete the last round of that. Um, There's one missing there, isn't there? Just putting this in manually. Must be there. Well, maybe that's the same. Yeah, that seems it's like it's the same, so maybe we can just make this a two bar loop. Yeah. Hey Richard, um, it may be, let me just turn my mic down a little bit. Um, and also, yeah, I'll, I'll, turn the, I'll turn the master up as well. There we go. Is that too loud now? <laughs> Is that better? Can you hear me? Cool, let's put these parts back in then. And let's put the metronome tempo back up. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take some, take the top end a bit off this now. I think. Okay, so there is some kind of chord stuff going on in the background here. But I'm going to come back to that. The next bit I want to look at is this melody. Uh, so let's put that in. Um, and I think that's going to be another towel. I mean, this is one of the reasons I just use the towel uh, is just because it is so CPU light, as I've said before. Um, it's it's wonderful and sounds great as well. Um, OK, so I've got one here. Uh, let's bring it in. Cool. And let's bring that in and let's just solo that. So with this, I'll just 
bring it down a little bit. So what do we got here? We've got the um, pulse wave or square wave um, and the sawtooth as well. And I've got the LFO on here, um, but there's a delay to it. So you, when you first, if I if I had it the delay off, it'd be on all the time. But then if I put the delay on, it just comes in at the end. Right, so let's listen to what it's what it's doing. round so very syncopated all kind of on the offbeat so let's record it in Play that now, my version. It's funny, as you kind of um, start working on the track, you kind of hear things that can adjust so I think a bit more reverb on the snare right um, let's just listen to this section now uh, So this is this is kind of going underneath those that that melody. Um, there's some sort of chords that are going underneath it, which are absolutely gorgeous. So let's uh, look to see what we can uh, use for that. Again, I'm going to go for a towel. Um, the next stream I'll do, the next track I'll do, I'll avoid my my parameters will be I won't use towel at all. <laughs> uh, cool. So let's see what these sound like. Um, Hey Richard, thanks for hosting. It's much appreciated. Okay. Uh... Whoa, sorry about that. That's really loud, isn't it? Unnecessarily loud. Loud and low as well. So let's just listen to what it's doing. Pretty sure these are just playing triad chords.
Okay, um, that's I'm pretty sure that's what it's playing. Uh, so let's uh, copy all that down. Got it in. I think I need to increase the voices, the voice av availability on this plugin. Uh, what have we got at the moment? We've only got six. Let's change. Let's uh, increase the polyphony to ten. Right, with this sound here, this towel, I'm going to put a bit more effect on that. I think a delay would be good, or echo. What um, if we put some portamento on those chords as well? Not too much. thing I think I forgot to do is uh, put the groove on these parts so it's on everything I've done up until the bass so let's just put the swing on that hmm, I wonder if the clap comes back in Okay, uh, so the next thing I want to look at is um, some of the background kind of pads that we listened to at the start. So if I go back to, uh, if we go back to this here. So let's just give ourselves a bit more space here. There we go. Cool. Uh, let's use a different sound. Um, can give the towel a rest. Uh, I've got a favourite here, actually, that I've used uh, over the years, which is uh, an Ableton Live preset called uh, Weeping Strings. Um, and essentially, it's actually an operator sound. Let's just turn it down. Very nice. There's not much you have to do with it really. Obviously you can kind of affect the cutoff. Um, and also the, can you affect the, uh, the attack? Um, you probably have to actually kind of put that in yourself, but that's probably fine. Let's just listen to what it's actually doing, this chord is. So 
So here, it's kind of got... Let's just take the cut off a little, off a little bit. I think it's that chord there. Sorry, I haven't got my keyboard up. There we go. Let's just listen to what it sounds like. Okay, um, and then let's see what it sounds like. Nice comes in there. I think it's important here. It's obviously important kind of everywhere. Um, um, but let's definitely put it in there. Come on. We don't we don't want the ball of ball of death. I think it's that. Kind of fades out, but, but I'll just put it in all the way through. And this is listen to what it's if it comes in again. It's a kind of textural thing really that's in at the end it's quite nice um, so let's just have a little playthrough shall we to see what see where we're at and um, maybe I'll just kind of add a bit of uh, tape saturation to this to give it a bit more of a kind of analog feel um, but yeah I'm quite happy with kind of the parts obviously it's not it's not exactly the same and I've got no idea exactly um, what uh, he used he used um, but you know Please uh, let me know if you, uh, Lindstrom, if you're if you're watching this. Um, it's cool. Let's just go to the master. Let's go to the UAD. Uh, so let's just put a G put G bus compressor on it. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick save actually, just in case we have a last minute crash. We don't want that. There we go. So, uh, what should we choose? Uh, let's just put some um, kind of mastering type. All right, let's have a play through. Um, let's just bring it up again, the Ampex, because it just looks so nice, doesn't it? Uh, there we go, we'll park it over there. Um, cool, so yeah, let's have a listen through to this from the top. In fact, what I'm gonna do just quickly is, because uh, we did have some things that we were adjusting here. We've got the bass. Um, um, we wanna bring that back, don't we? 
here we go. So we've got the release and the cut off, and then we had the frequency as well on the bubbler. Uh, hey, thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. Uh, East Beasy, I think it is. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. Um, cool. So yeah, we can we can just play around with um, some of that as well. Uh, some of the I won't record it in, but yeah, just sort of some of the modulation. Here we go. So. Oh, I've just noticed something. I think that the kick doesn't come in uh, so early. So let's just take those kicks. Sorry, the kick on the on the on the every other beat. Let's just check it here. Yeah, that sounds more appropriate. Uh, okay. All right, as you were bass we want that on that yes we want the bubbler there we can affect those let's go here we go from the top um and yeah let's uh let's play it through Let's go again because I don't know what's going on there. There was a bit of uh, bit of sort of CPU issues, but that's cool. I want to do. I want to adjust this as well. I want to take that synth riff down a little bit. I've taken those strings down as well. Uh, yes, CPU. We don't like it. Here we go. Let's go from the top, um, and hopefully it will be fine this time. Um, and I want to show. Actually, I want to. Yeah. No, that's fine. All right. Here we go. Come on, CPU. You can do it.
Oh, sorry, I was enjoying myself a bit too much there. <laughs> I, I normally just run through it once, but um, but yeah, that was good. Um, so Richard, uh, is Lindstrom using any techniques to introduce the different sections, or do they just come um, straight straight on? Yeah, I think. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, I'm I'm just playing this from session view, so I'm just triggering the different scenes. And if I was to record this into uh, a range view, then I'd probably get into more detail and. You know, I'd actually kind of bring those like the synth pad in, you know, sw swelling it in and out as he does. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I, th I've, I have seen him performing live. I'm not exactly sure if he's using Ableton Live or what, um, but yeah, that was good fun. Anyway, um, I'll uh, I'll put this project on Discord for the subscribers. Um, if you uh, do want to kind of get access to any of these bits and bobs that I create, um, then yeah, if you subscribe um, and you're on Discord, then you get access to the Discord channel, sub, uh, well, the Discord channel, the subs only uh, channel. So um, yeah, thanks a lot everyone for watching. Um, really appreciate it. Thanks for the comments, um, support as ever. <clears throat> I'll hopefully be back during the week for a midweek one and also definitely for next Sunday. Um, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks a lot everyone.